Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi, everybody. Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, taking a look at the DRF race of the day for Friday, October the 4th, race number seven at Belmont at the Big A, the second of two graded stakes races on the cards. The way a $200,000, mile three-eighths on the turf for Phillies and Mares. Before we get to the handicapping, let's get to the more important stuff. 10% off all DRF past performances. Use the coupon code DRFTV10. There's your QR code right now. Start shopping and start getting ready for the Breeders' Cup. And the way it might be a prep race for the Breeders' Cup Philly and Mare Turf. Remember the Philly Mare Turf's a mile and three-eighths at Del Mar this year. As we take a look at the field, we've got eight solid runners in the way of Chad Brown has two. Christophe Clement has two. But I wonder if surprisingly, the number one, I think this distance is what she's been looking for. Boy, that's an interesting. Yeah, I'm not sure what she's looking for, Dan. And she seems like she can do just about anything. And distance doesn't really affect her too much. She's been very good, short and long. My main concern with surprisingly, Dan, is I wonder if she's just over the top a little bit. I don't, I don't necessarily love any of her last three or four races. 9 through 11 are entered main track only. So we'll go to our time form U.S. pace projector. I kind of like this pace projector for surprisingly. I'd like to see John Velasquez get aggressive with her stretching back out. She's been wired in her last two races by Boat Caché, just sitting off the paces and working for her. Maybe she should go. Idea Generation, of course, pulled off the big stunner in the flower bowl and able to walk the dog on the lead. I'm not sure they're going to let that happen this time. I, maybe they won't. Um, I do still feel like the six is going to be on an early lead in this race. Um, so we'll see how, how the riders decide to play. I certainly didn't see a Mensa too. I know she's stretching out here. I didn't see her being part of this pace. Um, we'll see. Probably maybe the one decides to get aggressive here. I think the six makes the lead. And it's another good situation for Chad Brown, Dan, because he's got idea generation who is good enough to wire the field. And he's got the reliable closer, the seven Matulik. You really describe McCulloch a perfect way. She is reliable, and there's one thing she wants. It's a lot of distance. Avenue Niel, the number two, is the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating. Let's start things off with, surprisingly, going out for trainer Todd Pletcher. Again, wired in her last two starts going middle distances. The New York three starts back was probably too tough for her going nine and a half against the likes of Didier Nisi Marie. But I thought she ran okay when you go back to her race in the Orchid off, the, off a little bit of a layoff going a mile and a half. She was able to stay close. I know she worked out a good trip in that race and couldn't parlay a win against McHulick, but maybe she just gets the jump on that horse again. Now, listen, I, I'm with you. The, the, the interesting thing to me about the Orchid, Dan, is that she was in a good spot for most of the most of the way around there. And somehow McHulick got ahead of her in the stretch yeah. and she had to switch out behind her and couldn't get the job done there. I, I did think she ran well in there. She's kind of you know, lost me since then, but maybe you're right. I mean, maybe she does really want to go a bit longer and the stretch out will really help her. I don't just don't love her last three races, but she's certainly a contender in here. Many of these horses are exposed already. We know what we're going to get, but I'm not sure we've seen the best yet from the two. Avenue Niel, Christophe Clement gave this horse plenty of time, and she's come back off the layoff in very good form. She just missed at Saratoga, and then she scored a Kentucky Downs last time out. And I thought this was a really good effort. She has to fight, but she is able to prevail in the final eighth of a mile over this testing turf course. Distance is no problem for her, and it does seem like she has a strong kick. She really does. Uh, I, I'm I'm a fan of this horse. I liked all three of her starts when she got over here uh, last year for Clement. I thought that she showed some real potential, and it's been you know obviously taking him a while to get her going this year. But she ran fine off the layoff going this distance at Saratoga. She was only second best that day, but she was only second best to a good horse in Aspen Grove. And like you, I liked her most recent start too. She's interested in here. We'll see what kind of trip she gets. Clement also has the number three, La Mejana, making her first start since July. That was the Robert G. Dick Memorial at Delaware. She did stumble at the start, but then she wound up in a pretty good spot in the pocket in the early stages behind a very slow pace. Uh, she just didn't fire her best in that race, but it was a good race. She had Warlike Goddess coming out of there. He had Chop Chop, who came back to be placed in the Glens Falls when falling short to McHulick. She earned a 94 buyer speed figure, did Chop Chop. The prior start was okay in the Sheepshead Bay. I wonder if that stumbling start took the star chat along Mahana last time. Yeah, I wonder too. I didn't I didn't love that most recent race. Um, but you know, maybe things just also weren't going too well for her at that point. Then she, you know, was off a little bit of a lap there. She's missed more time since then. And now she comes back and Kamat gives her another chance here in graded company. The distance is no issue. 
I'm still not quite sure how good he is, how good she is. And the more I looked at it, the more I prefer to play my other horse. Mansitude is the number four. She's going to be stretching out to a significant distance for the first time since her early days in Europe for trainer Bill Mott. I thought she ran okay last time out. She was wired at Kentucky Downs in this restricted one dreamer stakes, and she's making up some late ground to finish third. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about this extra distance for Mansitude, but at least she can work out her own trip. Yeah, I'm not sure how, how this distance works out for her either. Um, I did think she ran pretty well in this race uh, that we're watching, though. There's nothing wrong with this performance. Two back at Saratoga, just sort of caught on the outside the entire trip there while the winner at a big price got up the, got up the rail and sort of took advantage uh, in that race. I don't know, man. I, I, I'm waiting for a breakout performance for, from her because I thought her stateside debut at Keenan was pretty good without a perfect trip, um, but she hasn't delivered it yet. Beautiful Love, the number five, a three-year-old taking on elders following a victory in the Jockey Club Oaks. Let's watch that race. She got a setup in here. This pace was wicked with a runaway leader. Beautiful Love was hanging out near the back of the pack. And once she gets outside into the clear under Dylan Davis, she just runs by all these horses in front of her. Uh, a pace-aided win to be sure, but she's also lightly raced with a lot of upside. Yeah, exactly. We'll see how, how it all plays out. It's not like she's stepping in against a bunch of killers in here, Dan, and she could certainly move forward again. The distance feels like it's okay for her. So we'll see if she, if she can run this race back and then, you know, sort of improve upon it because she had a lot go right for her in there and that field wasn't nearly as good as this one. No excuses in last year's way for the six idea generation who was able to make a nice easy lead and McCulloch just ran her over in the stretch. She's only had two starts this year. Her first back, probably a prep when she was the beaten favorite in a first level allowance race. And then the flower bowl where they just allowed Florent Giroux to make the lead with her. And these fractions are silly, although I guess they're not silly after we've watched New York turf races for the last 10 years or so. When you go 118, I know it's yeah. yielding going in a grade, uh, graded stakes race. You're probably supposed to hold on and she does. Kulik, we're going to see end up tiring to finish third, but she was on a pretty hard chase as the pace heated up. Yeah, she kept closer than than certainly that runner up there, Warlike Goddess, who did make a really nice late run in there, but it was too late. Listen, this horse just sort of took advantage last time and, and put that field to sleep and, and then kept going through the stretch. It's not like she's untalented, Dan. I mean, there were a bunch of decent races on her card. Um, you know, to me, she's hard to take out of that out of that win last time where she just sort of stole that race. And I don't think they're going to let that happen again in here. But listen, it's turf racing in New York. So don't be surprised when she's loose on a slow pace. The, the problem is she's not going to be 31 to 1 in this yeah. race either. I don't think she'll be the favorite, but she won't be that price. McCulloch is up next. Prior to the race, we just saw the Flower Bowl where she was compromised by the lack of pace and a loose leader. She was her usual solid self winning the Glens Falls at Saratoga. It was a race where she was expected to be very competitive on paper. She sat near the back. She swung five wide into the stretch and she bowled him over. You can depend on her to give a good effort. Yeah, every time. I mean, she shows up and she runs every time. And it's not like she's a total plotter either. I mean, she can keep, you know, at least within range of the pace if she has to, even though I do think sometimes that compromises her kick a little bit. You know, I like her, Dan. I have no real argument against her in here. I think she's a major contender. Personally, I think she's better. I know she's won over the distance a couple of times. I think she's better going even longer than this. I think a mile and a half is what she really wants. But she can get this distance, and she's a very logical horse in here. Star Fortress might have just been waiting to get back to this longer distance. Her last two races were at shorter. One was the New York, a very, very tough spot. And last time out in the Canadian, she just caught a hot horse in full count Felicia, who wired that field and then came back to win the E.P. Taylor with a 101 buyer speed figure. Go back on this one's form three starts. Mile three-eighths at Aqueduct, the Sheep said Bay. She ran really well to be second. She might be dirtied up coming into this race. Yeah, I, I think that could be the case too. I mean, she is not as reliable as some of the other horses in here, Dan, because there are good races on her car, and then there are some that aren't so good, and it's it's hard to make a bunch of excuses for her, but she does have some excuses. Um, and that's Sheep said Bay. Man, that, that race, it's, an, it's another race where a Chad horse got loose on a super slow pace, and wired the field. This horse was last when they came to stretch, and she ran in there. That was a really good performance. She's interesting stretching back out here. She's the kind of mare that just didn't get any cover last time out, and I think she's at her best when you cover her up, get her to the outside, because she does have a strong turn of foot, and she should be a good price in this race. Uh, the rest are entered main track only. We hope they don't participate, because we want to see this race on the turf. Before we take a look at our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Form YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for the way. I know I did generation at everything her own way last time out. I wonder if 
She's just also getting good for Chad at the right time. Boy, I need at least six to one, and I don't think I'm going to get it. I wonder how they'll bet the race. I, I couldn't. I couldn't do it, Dan. She's she's a quality I, horse. I won't be surprised when she wins back. I, I I couldn't do it. I talked myself into Star Fortress. I think she's interesting stretching back out in here, and I'll hope that she gets a better trip this time, and maybe she can get the job done in here. Um, the cut. Kind of, surprisingly sort of lost me so i left her out in here dan i put avenue neil in there instead i'm a fan of that horse and i do like her going this distance and i think we'd agree that mccue looks the horse to beat i mean it'll just be interesting to see if she gets bet way too much and is a favorite around eight to five or so and against this kind of field i'm not sure you want to take too short of a price yeah. eight seven six two for mike six seven three one for me interesting addition of the way of the second graded stakes race scheduled for turf at belmont at the big a on friday good luck Hey friends, you look like you're in need of a winner. If you enjoyed the great content right here, just click and subscribe right here and enjoy the great DRF.com race of the days, the phenomenal stakes previews, and so much more. Many of that content featuring me and my exceptional selections. Trust me, you won't regret it.